Hi folks, Robin here and I'm just on my way to meet Kevin for a cheeky wild camp and in today's video the, I think the purpose is going to be to see if the tarp tent scarp one is in fact as close as to perfect as you could get for a backpacking tent so uh, that is the plan So we're on the lookout for the Ferry Castle which is marked on the 25k scale maps Right, that's not good I don't want to camp near cows Ah no Why is there cows? This could be fun Right, I think we're here The opportunities for well camping don't seem very good though. And there's the cows. They're trapped. Here we see pinnacles of conglomerate rock left after the erosion during the Ice Age. Hence the name Fairy Castle because these sedimentary conglomerates rocks are shaped like a castle. I should be a geologist, but I'm not. But Excuse me, that was good. I do like geology. I try and study it, but I don't really have a clue about geology. Couldn't have put that any better myself. Right. Now we need to find somewhere to pitch. Toot sweet. This is looking good. Those cows have scarpered up the hill. Thankfully they won't come down and trample us during the night imagine that two wild campers found dead trampled by a stampede of cows not good ah, I've just eyeballed them what I'm going to try and do is kind of get them so we back down the glen oh this guy he's taking no prisoners I'm a bit nervous now I'm going to get out of his way This guy means business. Kevin, come over here, get the cow in the glen. It's panicking. Come over here, that cow's panicking. Oof. Calm down. Right, folks, we've been up and down this glen and we've settled on this pitch here. Basically, it's like really bouldery underneath. Obviously, we've got the riverbed in front of us here. And it's obviously there's a bed of rock right under the grass, so this is the less the least bouldery bit we've managed to find. So I'm gonna get the scarp one out now. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna pitch this downward wind. And I must say this is my fifth or sixth world camp in the top tent. And so far so good, it's my favourite tent. But would I say it's a perfect tent? Probably not, there's just a couple of wee niggly things that annoy me a bit. First of all, the sleeve for the, the pole can be a bit fussy and it gets a wee bit bunched up in the middle if you're not careful. So try and push it in and it gets so far in and then it bunches up down there and it bunches up in the middle. And when you're tired and hungry, after a big hike, unlike today. See, now it's just came away in the middle there. The other thing as well, is the little pockets for that to go in are tiny. But that's me got the hoop in place. Right, so, I can now Pitch these ends. Ah, oh, it's really bouldery there. Oh, there you go. I don't know what Kev's up to. <laughs> Making a tit of it as usual. <laughs> ah. 
The one thing I like is the little venting system. So this loop here goes up there like so, clips onto the, the little line lock there. And you can see there, this just opens up nicely and allows a bit of ventilation to pass through the tent if you open up the, the far end as well. I'll just tighten that ever so slightly. The good thing about these 9 inch nails is if you can't get it in at a 45 degree angle you can put it in maybe 25, 30 and it's long enough to get right under the grass there and that is pretty sturdy. Right, just in time because the rain's coming in that's the tarp pitched. Kev is always battling away there. <laughs> I've pitched over a big boulder, I need to get that out or I'm not going to... Right, it's half six, I met Kev Pretty much two hours ago. Now the tent is up, snug as a bug, batting down the hatches and get some scran on the go. Got some instant noodles there and then some vegetable chipotle chili with rice. I've not tried that one before, so that should be good. There we go, folks. Candlelit dinner for one. So, what do you do to entertain yourself in a tent? in autumn and particularly winter. So the clocks go back uh, next week and at the moment it's getting dark, it's just after six and it's getting light around about eight o'clock. So that's quite a few hours. And then obviously in the deepest, darkest December and sort of early January, it's like, aye, it's a long time in a tent. So this is a reason why I like the Scarp 1 tent is at least there is a bit of space. It's like a one and a half man tent. Um, there's nothing worse being cooped up in a coffin in winter. So uh, that is an advantage to this tent as well. The one thing I've noticed though is the fly sheet sits a bit close to the inner and I've tried really tightening everything up and it hasn't really worked. There's, it's so literally about an inch, which is fine on most occasions, but when it's wet, if you just your head touches it, it sticks with the condensation. So uh, it's just a minor niggle. And I noticed a lot of people will use a trekking pole at either side and a bit of guy line, and it just is enough to lift the fly sheet off the inner. So that is an option. But I don't always bring trekking poles, but um, aye. So that's two minors to this tent is the inner is closer is close to the fly and the sleeve for the middle pole can be a right pain at times. Uh, otherwise, I really can't find much else to fault it with. You've got to think as well. Uh, this tent cost me just just over four hundred pounds. I'll put the amount. In the corner there, the screen. Uh, I'm sure it was only like 410, and that that includes the uh, the import tax as well, and my credit card handling fee for a non-sterling transaction. So, I, if you think about what you'd pay for a Hilleberg Acto, which is quite similar to this, uh, you're paying what upwards of 600 pound, and I owned one of them before. You've got the uh, Fowl Raven, make a summer single hoop tent I've not got much experience of that to be honest but uh, yeah so for price you're talking just over £400 that varies obviously on the exchange rate as well uh, between Britain and the US 1.3 kilograms so it's not the lightest beast ever but for the space and its performance in bad weather I think it's a good sort of ratio um, aye I'm really happy with it, to be honest. I think I've said that before. It's a, it's a keeper. Good morning, campers. Good morning, campers. Oh, it's half seven. And apart from that bloody turbine that hasn't shut up all night, I got a decent sleep. Well, honestly, listening to that, it's like listening to an aeroplane just about to take off just all night. <laughs> Anyways, uh, get a coffee on the go, 
I'm not going to bother with breakfast because the car's like literally half an hour away. Um, so I. Right, the best bit of a wild camp is packing up. Not. Right, just got my sleeping stuff over there. Here, I'll tell you what though, these uh, little tables are fantastic. If you watched my Glen Line video, I did struggle to build it. <laughs> but I've sussed it now and they're, they're much better than those naff plastic ones. So another cool feature of this tent is you can extend your living area by pulling this forward. And this obviously increases your room inside the tent. But if you need room for cooking in, you just pull that back. And if you remember last night, I had my table here. And it was perfect for cooking in. It also has the desired double zip, so you can get extra ventilation up here for when you're cooking. As you can see here, Kevin has got his Lanshan pyramid tent. I think it's like the Lanshan 1.5 or something. He really likes that. It's got more, more space than the regular Lanshan. Let's have a wee cheeky look inside while Kev's up at the hill there. Nice, no bad like. My one gripe is they don't give you a guy line for here, so I need to sort something out for that. Obviously on a really windy day, you'll want to secure that with a guy line and stop that flexing. For what it costs for a guy line, I don't know why they don't give you side guys. Round the back here you see you've got three, really stable, good setup that. It's got ventilation, your side of the tent as well. Don't know if you remember, but the older models had it up here, so they have moved them to the side instead. These little check straps are for your crossover poles. They've got little straps as well attached to that with Velcro. I've removed them because they'd be noisy in the wind when you don't need them, but they're easy to put back on again. And they clip on to your guy lines here as well. I've removed the little loop. I wish I didn't do that because I'll need to sort of figure out where they roughly sit. It shouldn't be too difficult. Right, folks, it's time to take the tents down. I have to say, though, in my opinion, this is as close to a perfect tent as you'll get. No such thing as a perfect tent, of course. You can either spend your lifetime buying tent after tent, or you can accept that there's always going to be a couple of little caveats that'll annoy you, or you can buy two or three tents. So I've got this as my mountain tent, I've got the notch as my backpacking tent, and I've got the little Lanshan 1 Pro for the benign conditions in summer, for the summit camps. So, three tents, got all bases covered as far as I'm concerned. Why two Lanshans? Team Lanshan. Kev's happy with his Lanshans. Lanshan, Lanshan, Pyramid, Lanshan. Personal opinion, eh? But, eh, uh, what's your perfect tent? Let me know in the comments section below. But otherwise, I'm going to wrap this up, and I'll catch you next one. Cheers.